Hello and welcome back to the Science Factory's YouTube channel. A couple of weeks ago we posted a video called Eight Science Experiments with Surface Tension and today we're going to be going into a deeper explanation for why those experiments work the way they did and exactly what surface tension is and how it works. Now, before we get started with today's video, I did have a quick announcement. We're going to be changing our upload schedule to be two days a week. So we're going to be uploading videos on Wednesdays and Fridays instead of Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. This is because as we start to return to our normal work schedule, I'm not going to have quite as much time to continue to make YouTube videos. But I've been having a lot of fun, so I do still want to try making videos each week, and we'll see how that goes. If you want us to keep making videos, the best way to support our channel and make sure that we can keep providing you free, awesome science content is to make sure that you subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends, and make sure to like and comment on our videos. That tells us not only what you're looking for, but also tells YouTube that you're enjoying the content and you want to see more of it. Now, water is a very strange molecule for a lot of reasons, one of the main ones being that it expands when it freezes. Another one of those strange things about water is that water has really strong surface tension. And many of those differences are what makes water so conducive to supporting life on our planet. And so in this video, we're going to be explaining why water has strong surface tension and why that makes it behave differently than other liquids. Now you might be wondering, why do some liquids have surface tension and others don't? That kind of seems weird, right? Well, it all has to do with polarity. To help us out in this video, we're going to use our favorite molecular modeling kits. These are called Snatoms, and they come in a large size and a small size. If you'd like to give Snatoms a try, I encourage you to check them out on Amazon. We've put a link in the description for this video down below. Behold! Molecules! So if you watched our video, Five Science Experiments with Toilet Paper, you might remember that we floated a paperclip on water. And we were able to do that because water has surface tension. Water is called H2O, and that stands for two hydrogens and one oxygen. Water is what's known as a polar molecule, which means that its charges are not quite symmetrical. The easiest way to think about charges with molecules is to think about magnets, even though they're not quite the same thing. Positively charged parts of molecules are attracted to negatively charged parts of molecules. Opposites attract. So in order to show you how polar molecules are attracted to each other, we went ahead and dumped a bunch of water on the table. Now you can see a couple of the arrangements that water molecules might take because of their polar nature. The hydrogens, which are white, are slightly more positive and are therefore attracted to the back of the red oxygens, just like this. Another arrangement that can happen is that the water molecules can stack back to back, similar to this. When molecules are at liquid temperatures, they have enough energy to jiggle around and slide past one another instead of locking into crystal lattices. Once the liquid cools down into a solid though, the molecules have less energy and they'll tend to clump together a little closer. Water on the other hand, because of its polar nature, tends to create rings like you see here. And because it's creating rings, there's a hole in the middle where there is no water. This is the reason that water actually expands when it freezes and also the reason that ice floats. Normally solids are more dense than their liquid counterparts, but water is an exception to that rule. That's really important too, because if water sank when it froze, ponds wouldn't stay insulated during the winter, and fish wouldn't be able to survive when the lakes freeze over. Now one other thing that's really cool about these molecular models is that they show that the hydrogens are not attracted to each other. So I can use this hydrogen to push away another water molecule. That's because the hydrogens have a slightly positive charge, so they don't want to hang out with each other. And because of that asymmetry, or polarity of water, water molecules tend to be attracted to other water molecules nearby. And as a result, water molecules tend to clump together, even overcoming gravity to form domed drops on a surface. Other molecules like CO2, or oxygen, are symmetrical with their charges. So these molecules, if you were to chill them down to a temperature where they were liquid, wouldn't have the same properties as water because they're non-polar molecules. Another interesting molecule in terms of polarity is isopropyl alcohol. Isopropyl alcohol is mostly non-polar, but it is slightly polar because the oxygen up here is slightly asymmetrical in its charge. So this molecule isn't very polar, but it is slightly. Glycerol is a molecule that's found in vegetable oil and animal fat, and it looks like this. Glycerol is a non-polar molecule, meaning that it's not asymmetrical in its charge and it wouldn't have surface tension. For molecules like glycerol, they're not attracted to each other like polar molecules are, 
So they don't tend to clump together as much like water does when it beads up on a surface. Instead, oil molecules tend to just spread out, kind of like if you imagine just dumping a bunch of ping pong balls on a table. They're not gonna form a pile, they're gonna go everywhere. This is why vegetable oil and oils in general tend to get all over the place and are really messy. Now, this crazy long molecule here is really interesting because it represents soap. So why is it that soap can interrupt the surface tension of water? Well, remember, water is connected in a chain because it's a polar molecule, and so all of the molecules at the surface are all attracted to each other, and so they like to cluster together and clump. However, soap molecules are only polar on one end. One end of the soap is hydrophilic, meaning that it's attracted to polar molecules like water, and the other end is hydrophobic, meaning that it's not attracted to polar molecules like water. So if you replace some of those water molecules with a soap molecule, the soap molecule is still going to be attracted to the water on one end, but on the other end, there's not going to be an attractive force. This is going to create more space between the molecules at the water surface the more soap molecules are introduced. It's because soap is both hydrophobic and hydrophilic, and because it's super long, that it's able to disturb surface tension so well. So on this end of the soap molecule, it can interact with and be attracted to molecules like water that are also polar. But on this end, it's a nonpolar molecule, meaning that it can interact with things like oil. And because it's a longer molecule, both sides of this molecule can be interacting with other molecules at the same time. This makes soap a really good option for things that are water-based or things that are oil-based because it can help you wash off both of them. But the question is, why did soap make the water molecules collapse and make them act like nonpolar molecules? So how exactly does surface tension work? Well, if you can imagine a cup filled with water molecules just like this, the water molecules that are on the surface aren't surrounded on all sides by water. And because of this, the attraction that those water molecules at the surface have to other water molecules is spread out over fewer neighbors. So the water molecules that are at the surface have the same attraction to their neighbors, but because they have less neighbors, they're going to pull on all of their neighbors a little bit more. This means that the water molecules at the surface are going to be a little more tightly packed together because of those attractive forces. And as a result, the bonds between all of the surface water molecules are gonna be a little bit stronger than those in the middle of the cup. And this is why things like floating a paperclip on the surface of water is possible. Because the surface can hold up a little bit more weight than the rest of the water because the surface is actually more dense than the rest of the water. When soap is introduced to water surface, it helps to spread the molecules out because it decreases the attractive forces between different molecules. And because the surface becomes less dense, all of those molecules have to spread out, which creates motion across the surface. Okay, so that explains most of our surface tension experiments from the video. But what about that other experiment that we did called anti-bubbles, where we saw droplets of coffee and milk skittering across the surface without reincorporating into the liquid. That doesn't seem to depend on surface tension in quite the same way, does it? Well, in order to understand that, we're going to need to go back to our molecular modeling kit, SNATOMS. So what exactly is going on here? How come there were bubbles floating across the surface of the water? Remember, our soap molecule on one end is polar, which means that it's attracted to water. Another word for this is hydrophilic. And on the other side, the soap is hydrophobic, which means that it's not attracted to water and it's nonpolar. Now you can imagine if we had a big drop of water and we had a bunch of these soap molecules that the polar end would be sticking to the water and the nonpolar end would be pointing away from the water. And if you have enough of these soap molecules around the drop of water, you're going to form a sort of skin on the outside of the water droplet that's completely hydrophobic, meaning it doesn't like to mix with water. And because it was in coffee, it's easier to see this effect because the coffee's brown in color and so you can see those drops clearly on the surface. What's happening when our Q-tip with soap moves quickly is that it's forming droplets of water completely encased in soap molecules and those drops of coffee don't want to reincorporate into the main cup because the surface tension of the coffee is able to hold up a little bit of weight and those water droplets that are on top of the surface, they're not very heavy and again, they're surrounded by a hydrophobic coating or a non-polar coating of soap. By the way, you know those little bugs that float on the surface of water? They're called water striders or pond skaters. Well, the reason they can float on the water is because of surface tension, just like our paperclip earlier in the video. Now the coolest thing about water striders is that the biggest ones in the world are from northern Vietnam and southern China, and their bodies alone can be one and a half inches long and their legs can be longer than four inches each. 
That means that one bug can be over eight inches across and still float on the water. That's about the width of the short side of a piece of paper. Super cool. Well, I hope that this video was helpful to teach you more about surface tension and why those experiments worked. If you want to see more explanation videos like this that go over topics in a little bit more depth, please let us know in the comments down below. We want to make sure that we're making videos that you find useful at home. I'm Mr. Brian, and I'll see you next time. What do pulleys like best about their job? Being the center of attention. What do you call it when there's tension among the percussion section of a band? Drama.